Jesse's traveling the world. What's he gonna do? Head up City Projects, GOG for you. Old Man Stauff built a house and filled it with his toys. Six guests were invited one night. Their screams, the only noise. Blood inside the library, blood right up the hall, dripping down the attic stairs. Hey, guests, try not to fall. So, you're probably wondering, what the hell was that? That, my friends, was an old school game called The Seventh Guest, which at the time, like back in 93, was one of the coolest games around. Seriously, we're talking awards and accolades from both like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. I know, it was kind of unheard of at the time. And the best part is, chances are, many of you have never even heard of it, let alone played it. And just maybe, that even goes for these games. The original Syndicate? Deus Ex, the original? Fallout? Beyond Good and Evil? And right now I know you're saying, whoa, hold up, Jesse. Uh, what do any of these games have to do with each other, let alone CD Projekt? Well, my friends, today we're talking to GOG.com, formerly Good Old Games, and it just so happens that they were founded by CD Projekt. Uh, you might have heard us talk about them during the podcast. But rather than me try to explain, I was lucky enough to sit down with the experts. All right, so GOG.com is a download store for games. Uh, we sell a huge variety of games, but we're most famous for our massive back catalog of classic games. We have more than 400 games that date from all the way back to like 1982. Uh, we have games that aren't even released yet. We have some new games that are available for pre-order and aren't even yet playable. So a massive catalog with 70 plus partners, different publishers, different developers. Uh, all of our games have no DRM, which means no copy protection. So if you buy our game, you can download it, put it on a flash drive, burn it to a DVD, do whatever you want, back it up wherever you want. We trust you not to take it and pirate it randomly everywhere thousands of times. Uh, we also charge fair prices everywhere in the world. Uh, for American gamers, this might not be so much of a big deal because they're generally paying USD, which is kind of the currency of games. They don't care much. But in Europe and the rest of the world, frequently you pay a lot more because instead of paying 60 bucks, you pay 60 euro, which is like 70 or 80 bucks. So we charge only USD everywhere in the world fair prices. And finally, we have customer love. Uh, we make all of our games work. If they're old game, we make them work on modern system. We bundle them in with a bunch of extra goodies. Uh, we have a fantastic customer support team that will help you solve any problems you have running the games. And we have a great community that has awesome advice, free giveaways, and a really friendly bunch of people. Did I hear uh, something about bundles and freebies? So what kind of goodies are we talking about? I'm talking about uh, wallpapers or the game soundtrack or uh, the game manual or some art books, for example. I mean, high-res uh, art books. So anything we can find and make digital is bundled for free with the game because obviously our mission is to sell games and our mission is to make people happy with uh, buying games. So. Uh, we we want to provide value for money, basically. And so I know right now you're thinking the exact same thing I did before I became a GOG convert. Can I just buy all these games in a bargain bin somewhere for like 99 cents? You can, if you're still running Windows 95. So uh, some people wonder why should you buy classics from GOG.com as opposed to either pirating them, which I really hope you don't do, or buying them from other some other store, which is also a possibility. Uh, the reason why you come to GOG is because we put a lot of work into remastering our games. When you get a game from a different store, they don't necessarily look at what can we do to make this run on modern Windows operating systems. I'll give you an example of a game we released just last month, Anachronox, which is really great uh, adventure RPG, very interesting, quirky story but is legendary for being very hard to get to run on Windows 7. It's written in Lithtech Engine. It's very kind of janky code sometimes as far as on modern systems. And what we ended up doing was we have people who are skilled programmer wizardry people, and they uh, were changing drivers, writing new wrappers, downloading solutions online, and coding custom things. We don't have the source code for these games. We're using the same retail builds that you can buy in a box copy 20 years ago when the game came out. What we're doing is, it's like trying to do endoscopic surgery, right? You have this little tiny keyhole and we're attempting to rebuild the entire internal structure of the game. And as a result, we've gotten Anachronox to run quite respectably on Windows operating systems, 
the modern ones, even though it's very difficult to do yourself. So when you buy a game from GOG, in addition to all the goodies, in addition to the unlimited downloads and the DRM-free nature of the games, you can trust that on the overwhelming majority of systems, it's going to work flawlessly. Of course, the genius and the tragedy of PC as a platform is there's unlimited configurations. So sometimes you buy a game from us and you're like, well, my seven-year-old video card doesn't play well with my brand new motherboard and newest Windows operating system, so the game doesn't run. What do I do? That's what we have customer support for. Uh, they're, these guys are excellent at talking to you, getting information from you, figuring out how to fix your problem and get back to you and help you play your games. And that's what makes the service GOG.com offers so invaluable to the history of gaming. Keeping all these different old school games alive. It's kind of like the Lierv of gaming. And to paint even a prettier picture, it's all DRM free, which is amazing. I think being DRM free is our DNA somehow. I mean, it was clear from the very beginning that the, the only efficient way to fight against piracy is to, is to give freedom to gamers. I mean, uh, they should be free to buy a game and play the game whenever they want, wherever they want. I mean, um, piracy is extremely user friendly and I believe that providing DRM free games is the best way to fight against piracy. And for us, it was clear from the very beginning. If you put a DRM on the game, it's actually working against the gamers. It's a bit schizophrenic somehow because <laughs> you should be rewarding uh, users, not making things, uh, things difficult for them. So let's talk games. You saw a few, but trust me, there are a ton more. All right, so GOG was uh, start. I mean, we started GOG in September 2008, and our initial mission, and I mean, it's still our mission actually, was to revive PC classics. And uh, we started initially with Interplay, so we had great games like Fallout 1, Fallout 2, Decent, uh, what else, Tremor? Some of my favorite games we have. Uh... We Jagged Alliance series is a phenomenal game. Yeah, we have the Jagged Alliance series as well. And then, of course, we were adding publishers step by step. And we acquired the classics from Codemasters, the classics from uh, Atari. So Atari, I mean, oh, 50 games or something. Uh, I don't know, I'm thinking of Master of Orion. Or I'm thinking of, hey, we have some fans out there. Uh, I'm thinking of Master of Orion. Uh, what else? Travel? Alone in the Dark. Uh, I don't know, so many games. I mean, all the Atari classics, obviously, uh, the D&D games as well. So we have Baldur's Gate, Planescape Torment, uh, some of the greatest PC RPGs. Uh, as of today, we have over 400 PC classics on the website. Uh, we even have the games from EA since a few months, and we have games like, I don't know, Tremor, can you quote a few names from EA? <laughs> from EA, uh, Wing Commander series, phenomenal games. Uh, we've also added Syndicate, which is one of the best tactical real-time games ever made. Uh, also from EA, what else have we added? I'm confusing the ones we're going to release with the ones we have released. Ultima, Ultima series, we start with Ultima Underworld and also uh, Dungeon Keeper, which is a really awesome, very quirky uh, dungeon strategy sim. You don't see much of those anymore. And just to, to finish, there is one big game we forgot to mention. Come get some. I mean, we have Duke Nukem 3D on GOG, so I guess that game is quite famous for, for all American PC gamers. So come and, and have a blast. <laughs> As many of you know, GOG is where I got Fahrenheit, which is a game that you and I love. Classics like that can be found all over the site. Uh, our, our really popular genres are RPG, their adventure, and their strategy. We talked a lot about RPG and some action. It's worth mentioning uh, strategy classics we have are games like Panzer General, games like Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, we have just a, a wide variety of strategy for adventure. We have core adventure games like Siberia, like The Longest Journey, and also kind of action adventure games like uh, Beyond Good and Evil, one of my favorite games ever. Outcast. So, yeah, Outcast, so some more really great games of that sort as well in our classic catalog. But GOG recently did bigger, fresher, newer. We were kind of shifting our branding a bit. We've changed our name, now we're just GOG.com. And we're offering newer games, but we're still keeping that, that solid gameplay mechanic. We're not looking to put shovelware up on the site. We're picking good games to throw up on the site. Games like Legend of Grimlock, which is going to be available next week on the 11th of April, but which is really very heavily modeled after classics like Eye of the Beholder or Dungeon Master. These are a great old school first person dungeon crawls, and we have a new take on them with phenomenal graphics, with great gameplay elements, 
are interesting puzzles, so it's a new game, but any old school gamer would love playing it. We're also at, we've also added games like Trine, a platformer that, if you are a fan of Rayman, or any of those great platformers, Earthworm Jim from back in the past, this is a great opportunity for you to try a new one that's got gorgeous graphics. Uh, and we've also just yesterday announced Botanicula, which is a adventure exploration game. So if you're a fan of those adventure games like uh, Machinarium or Samorost by the same developers, that's now on GOG as well. And in the future, we're going to provide more of that kind of really interesting new game, but definitely one that you can feel harkens back to the good old days. Um, we're, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it, we're a little bit, we're kind of on edge on this one because we're still waiting to see if we can get everything finalized with it, but Theme Hospital is coming very soon to GOG. The exact date, maybe before you see this video, maybe right after, but if you love that game, which is a really awesome, very humorous, you wouldn't think a sim about running a hospital is funny, but this is actually a really funny game. Uh, it will be available either very shortly or just recently, so be sure to check out GOG. As far as long-term plans, uh, more classics, more classics every week, hopefully two a week, but we know at least for sure one a week. Uh, also, we will be bringing more new games as well. So we'll be bringing you day one releases, pre-sales, and premium versions from other publishers. Uh, we're looking to keep this whole bigger, fresher, newer thing going to really wow everybody with all the great games that are coming. And there you go, a better sales pitch I've yet to hear. GOG.com is a terrific site, and I wouldn't even endorse it unless I used it and loved it, which I do. Let's go back to Fahrenheit, for example. When I got that game, it not only came with all the exclusives and all the different arts and manuals and things like that, but it also came with everything I needed to run the game properly, burn it onto a CD if I wanted to, stick it on a flash drive, whatever. It's awesome. And stuff like that convinced me they are what they say they are. And that is rare these days. But why tell you about it when you can experience it yourself? So right now, I want to share something awesome with you. In honor of us hitting 300,000 subscribers, it's time for... You know what? Actually, Trevor, you can handle this. Hello, space butterflies. We have a surprise for you tonight. If you're watching this show and you want to have a little fun, well, GOG.com is going to do something for you. Leave a comment on this video, like it, and you'll have a chance to win yourself one of a hundred free game codes on GOG. That's right, my space butterflies. Keep on chilling. That's right, my space butterflies. If you comment below telling us which GOG.com game you would use your code on, so, you know, you might have to go look and do some research, it's called Synergy, people. And like the video, you'll be entered to win one of 100 codes that can get you a free copy of whatever game you want to play on their site. So very special thank you to GOG.com for this contest. There are tons of great games out there for you to discover, and it's almost summer, so now's the time to hide from that sun and relive the greats, people. Winners will be announced soon, and all I can say is good luck, keep gaming, and to be continued.